smashing your eyeballs with utterly crazy exterior styling, their willingness to add unnecessary R-bike cool doors to EVs, promising tech, luxury, performance, and looks like nothing else on the market. Hi-Fi have been assaulting that EV market with their tomorrow's future is here today cars. This Hi-Fi Y is supposedly toned down a bit because it's going mainstream. But don't worry, it's not completely sane. This is the brand new Hi-Fi Y. I'm Will and this is China Driven. Let's get a few things out of the way. Firstly, pricing. Not much to go on until its launch, but supposedly its pre-sale entry-level price will be 389,000 RMB in China, about $4,000 more than its benchmark, the Neo ES6. But expect prices to rise after the pre-sale. Two battery options are available for the rear-wheel drive model, a smaller 76.6 kilowatt hour BYD blade battery with 560 kilometers of claim range, and a larger Cattel 115 kilowatt hour pack with a range estimate of 800 and 10 kilometers. The dual motor sticks with the larger 115 kilowatt hour pack with a range of 765 kilometers. No official charge times for the Hi-Fi Y, but don't expect anything lightning quick with that big battery pack. For reference, the Hi-Fi Z with a slightly larger 120 kilowatt hour pack, DC fast charges in 55 minutes. Even being a restrained Hi-Fi for the masses, the Hi-Fi Y still manages to catch the eye with its pops of colors, LED dominated front end, and just enough sculpting. Of course, being a Hi-Fi, it has ISD, interactive signal display. It's basically these lights up here. There's 828 LEDs, and you can display all different kinds of animation. In fact, coming on an OTA is the ability to actually doodle your own kind of pixel art. However, unlike the Hi-Fi Z, there are no cool projectors in this one. But this is still pretty fun. Up front, LEDs lead the way from light bars to light pixel art. It's become Hi-Fi's signature to shove as many LEDs on a car as humanly possible. Now up front, the Hi-Fi does come with an 85 litre frunk. And although it's kind of skinny and long, Hi-Fi do claim that this will take a 20 inch suitcase, basically hand luggage. Now, because we're in Beijing today, I happen to have some hand luggage with me. So let's have a try. Surprisingly, it does seem to fit. Back here, the boot space is more than enough. 692 litres, not including an extra 47 litres underneath the trunk, which is good for those people in Europe who like to carry a charging cable. Fold down those rear seats and you'll get a spacious 1,848 litres. However, there are no buttons here to drop the seats and it's a bit of a reach. Ugh, from back here. Because Hi-Fi use a rear camera for the digital interior mirror, you needn't worry about rearward visibility. As such, the rear end is able to pull off some serious rake on its rear window. Huge LED rear light bar running just underneath the boot lip spoiler, forking as it wraps around the rear. The blackened pillars down the side give the floating roof effect, whilst the lower black trim helps squeeze the side profile heft. This metallic purple car getting those splashes of vibrant color. If the Hi-Fi Z and X are the crazies of the family, then you'd say the Hi-Fi Y is quirky. That family member who left the UK and decided to live in China, not crazy, but not run of the mill. Now, obviously being a Hi-Fi means that the rear doors are not your usual sort of doors. You already saw it in the intro. Here we have a normal door and a kind of going door up top. The interesting thing is that actually this top roof part won't open if the car senses that it's raining. Oh, you can also just double click the button here because there is no handle to open just the top part. If you're gonna chase a niche, then weird doors on a mainstream car is definitely a less crowded space than outright speed. This has got the doors. Outright speed, however, is sensible. You won't expect me to say that in the same sentence as hi-fi. But sensible in the world of EVs doesn't mean completely sedate. This dual motor version will still pump zero to 100 in 4.7 seconds. 
That's Ford Focus RS kinds of speeds, and this thing is way more luxurious and comfortable. Power-wise, this dual motor comes with 373 kilowatts and 620 newton meters of torque, whilst the rear-wheel drive model makes do with 247 kilowatts and 410 newton meters, good for a 6.8 sprint time. There's no air suspension in the Hi-Fi Y, but it does come standard with CDC, and it does its job of softening off or tightening up the suspension depending on what mode you're on. Talking about modes, in the Eco mode, this dual motor will actually disengage that front motor, giving you essentially rear wheel drive and 30 kilometers of extra claimed range. So driving impressions of the Hi-Fi Y, what, what do I think? Well, it's definitely maybe more sedate than some of the other Hi-Fi offerings, but it's very sensible and grown up and being an EV, it's got more than enough power when you need it. Sure, on paper, it seems a little bit slower than some of its competitors, but really, do you need to be hitting somewhere near four seconds in a daily driver probably being used as a family vehicle? I don't think you do. It's got a double wishbone up front and five link in the rear, you know, giving you that mix of the sportiness and obviously rear comfort. I wouldn't describe that this Hi-Fi Y really feels sporty. If you want something from Hi-Fi that is sporty, then you better go check out the Hi-Fi Z. I mean, having the rear wheel steer in here obviously does make it a bit more darty and agile. And obviously U-turns are made a lot easier. This dual motor comes with ventilated Brembo four piston calipers up front, and it will go from 100 to zero in 34.8 meters. Now, we recently reviewed the ES6, but we drove that on a closed mountain road, and it would be unfair to compare the driving dynamics, having just driven this on the motorway and on urban streets. I haven't really had a chance to throw this around a corner in anger, but I can tell you that inside this cabin is extremely comfortable and it's extremely quiet. Cameras, midi wave radar, ultrasonic radar, it's got it all 31 sensors in total, including an optional roof mounted LiDAR, all being forced into an Orin X chip with 254 tops of power. And that is all gonna be used to drive hi-fi pilots at the hi-fi level 2 ADAS system. Now it might seem kind of underwhelming that this only has a single Orin X chip when people like Xpeng put in two and Neo shove in four, but also inside the hi-fi is a Texas Instrument TD4 chip which deals with some of the autonomous features of this car including the automatic parking. In terms of screens in here, there's a fair few. There's a 22.9 inch heads up display. There's a 12.3 inch instrument panel. There's a really long 17 inch 3K OLED panel here in the middle, as well as a 15 inch passenger entertainment screen. In terms of what is driving them in here, there's an 8155 CPU from Snapdragon, but for the central touch screen, which has things like a 3D rendering of the car from Unreal Engine, it uses the brand new 8250 CPU from Snapdragon. Now, just like the Hi-Fi Z, this has the Hi-Fi Bot, which is basically the kind of mechanical electronic arm that tilts the screen. Now, in the Hi-Fi Z, it does all that crazy dancing business going left to right. This doesn't have that much movement. Instead, it can just go up and down about 25 degrees. It can be done in accordance to the driver's seat, angling the screen as the seat moves. You can also use the steering wheel to also move it, and you can also unlock it and manually move it if needs be. There's an optional 2,820 watt speaker system in here from Meridian, who are the famous audio partners of Jaguar Land Rover. Now there's 23 speakers in here, plus another two for the driver's headrest making 25 in total and this does have spatial audio as well. The 20 way adjustable front seats have heat ventilation and massaging. You expect nothing less from a Chinese premium EV nowadays. The rear makes do with just heat. However, it does have a rear reclining function and that's always nice. 
The central storage in here can actually be optioned with a heated and cooled storage up to 6.4 litres according to Hi-Fi. Now, I say heated and cooled storage, but this thing can cool things down to minus six. That's not cooled storage, that's a bloody freezer. You could keep your mum's lasagna in here for months. Now, in terms of the material quality in here, it's actually really, really good. I mean, this is a premium EV after all. Now, Napa leather is optional, but even still, the cheaper, say cheaper materials like the plastics are really actually quite thick and solid and they all have some kind of patterning or texture on them, which is a lot better than the dreaded black piano trim. The material quality in the back is equally as good as the front. Now this does have the optional Nappa leather, but I wouldn't think the standard material would be whole worlds below this. Now in terms of room back here, you do have loads of knee room and mountains of headroom with this roof door open, but obviously closed while driving. Even if you're six foot, you've got loads of headroom in here. You don't need to worry. Other things back here that are optional include things like this little tray table. Now, one thing that Hi-Fi has done that's a bit different to other people is something called the Hi-Fi port. Now, I've got into this argument a little bit with people online. So you see, I think that when you start paying a, a, a wadge of cash for a premium car, especially a techie premium EV, I really think that rear entertainment should be an option at least. And a lot of people are like, no, you can just take your iPad, which is true. But I still think that it's not that much of a big ask for manufacturers when they're charging this much money to put a screen in the car. Well, Hi-Fi have decided to muddy the waters and come up with something that kind of straddles the line. You see that Hi-Fi port is basically a USB socket for power, and then it's a kind of socket to put in this kind of magic arm and you can get different attachments. This one is for an iPad and you can literally just bang that into the roof. And now I have some rear seat entertainment. They also make another attachment where you can put a projector up here and then fire it out of the rear window onto a white wall or something if that tickles your fancy. The Hi-Fi wire bound for Europe marks the brand's entrance into a more mass market price point. Still premium, still full of tech, still bonkers enough. But even if it beats its Neo ES6 benchmark in terms of product, can Hi-Fi tear or divert people away from Neo service? I guess we'll find out. Calling the Hi-Fi wire sedate is a bit disingenuous because this thing is only sedate when you compare it to these two psychos. Park it next to anything else on the road and it's definitely gonna stand out. I'm Will, that is the brand new Hi-Fi Y which is going to Europe and this is China Driven.